So I thought that um, I could start the session by giving you like a little bit of info about Grand Union, which is the gallery that I work in. Um, and I could talk a little bit about like the experience I've had working with artists through Grand Union and just over the past couple of years while I've been practicing as a curator. Um, and I guess because every, everyone's experience is quite different and there's so many different ways to practice. Um, I could just touch on a few things that I've kind of specialized in over the last while. Um, and then, like I said, we could go on to talk a little bit about um, those really great white pube articles. And the, the one which I really love uh, is like really basic and simple and straightforward. And it's just how to get an exhibition. <laughs> um, and I should mention actually as well that I teach um, on a curatorial course and uh, at this article I send to loads of people because it's just, there's no holds barred, there's no bullshit. It's just like, this is what you kind of have to do in like really plain and simple English. Um, so we can go through that for a bit and then you can ask any other questions. I feel like more than ever, spaces where you can congregate together. I know it's ironic I'm saying this now while we're in lockdown, but places where you can congregate together and organize with one another is so valuable and so important and having these artistic spaces where people can come into um, and be properly supported and think about their practice and articulate the world in which they're living in is, it's so important um, and, I think as a curator, uh, like working with loads of different artists, um, like I'm currently, uh, like I'm constantly inspired by people who are coming through. And um, I think we can learn a lot from one another. And so, but hopefully Grand Union is, is a place where you can, where you can kind of get experience of that and you can kind of do that. Um, but maybe I want to go on and talk a little bit now about, I was trying to think about how to, um, how to, to kind of focus the session that might make it useful for people. So if you do have any questions, like fire them into the box. But I thought that um, if all of you are kind of practicing artists and you wanted more practical advice, um, there is this one article by the White Pube that I wanted to kind of, talk everyone through. I think it's really, I think it's really diff difficult being an artist. I think it's really difficult. Um, like you have to kind of learn how to hustle, right? We're all hustling all the time. Um, and there are some really basic things that they laid bare uh, and they published this article, which is just called how to get an exhibition. Um, thanks Amber. And I think they're kind of amazing because there's just no bullshit with them. It's like straight to the point. And it's uh, like I was saying at the start, this is something that I will use with loads of students or I send to artists all the time because there's some really basic things that you can potentially do um, to just make your presence felt, I guess. Um, so the first thing that they talk about, I'll just go through this bit by bit, and uh, we have the, the Google Docs, which you can access at the end, and they have all the different links in it as well. But one of the most basic things that they say is like, if you know that you want to be an artist, like be, you need to like really feel it. So if you're going to be, if you want to be a visual artist and you want to practice and you want to like show your work in, in public spaces, um, like really know that you want to do it because it is really fucking hard. So um, one of the things that they kind of start with is um, they talk about working with one another and working together. I think that's, uh, that's one of the things that I've really appreciated over the past couple of years is um, being involved in a community and I think for me, one of the most important things was just recognizing that um, after a certain point, I just wanted to surround myself with people who were supportive and people who um, where we were on the same page with one another. 
you know, people I could really rely on um, and that we, we all shared like similar politics and we all wanted a similar thing and um, that we could all like work together towards that. And I think that's really important if you are, you know, maybe you've gone through art school and you've studied fine art and you come out into the world and it's like, what the hell am I going to do here? I think surrounding yourself with other artists so that you can do things with one another is really, really important. And that's one of the things that they say at the very beginning of this article is like, be kind to yourself, be kind to one another. Um, and also like try and work collectively because it's the only way that we can, we can do this. So one of the, the first kind of practical things that they talk about is using Instagram and like using social media. If you're an artist and you work in a visual way, Instagram's kind of perfect for that. Um, you can be, they say that, you know, the best sorts of Instagram for artists are if you put like, you do a mixture of like professional and you do a mixture of personal. So it's not just all of one or all of the other. Like it's good to see someone's personality in there. Um, make an Instagram that's really kind of clear that it has your name so that people can easily search for you. Um, you can use that as well to, to your advantage. I mean, I guess Facebook's kind of dying out a bit and it's hard to keep up with like different listing sites. So Instagram's a really good way to follow lots of different organizations and institutions that you might be into. They share all of their work there. So you can kind of like follow all of that. Um, you can follow other artists as well. It's a good way to connect. It's, it's been interesting the past few years if I've, um, if I've been traveling for work, uh, if you meet someone new and they're interested in your work or you're interested in them, people exchange Instagrams now. It's not like you, like you'll share your handles with one another. It's, you're not like sharing business cards all the time. Um, although they can still be quite useful like that seems to be a really great way where people are connecting with one another. Um, you can also use like different listing sites. What I've found is, um, for example, Art Monthly, they have a they have a website with like most of the galleries all around the UK and you can see what's on at any given time. Um, it links to all of their social media and you can kind of like see what's going on. So you can see what's out there. Um, and I think it's a really good practice to like to be visiting things um, to be going to do things and to do that with one another, um, like go on art dates with one another. Uh, go to see like different shows together. We've tried to do that a few times with Grand Union, like because it can be quite isolating if you're practicing as well. And and um, there are all sorts of barriers for people who are walking into different spaces. So like just having like pals to go along with where you can all do it together um, is like a good way to go out and see different things. Um, they talk a little bit about Twitter as well. Uh, I find Twitter really useful. And I guess like we're live tweeting this event, I think. <laughs> so um, even though you have like a character limit, you can really like be concise um, and you can, you, you can like share and retweet loads of stuff. Um, I went to this like development session maybe about a year ago now. Um, and one thing that they said that really stuck with me is like Twitter's quite an interesting space because you can like show support and solidarity like through your different retweets. It's not just exactly what you're saying in your own voice, but it's like what the people that you're supporting and the things that you like, like it says quite a lot on your on your like Twitter timeline. So um, whilst it's not as visual maybe as Instagram, I think it's quite good to be using that and you can like be seeing what's going on in lots of different um, institutions as well. Um, they talk a bit about websites. This is something I think is quite important, actually. Um, if I'm doing research on an artist, to have a website where you can click through and see the different projects, so like different artworks that they have, maybe if there's been some like writing um, about one of your shows or just like something visual where you can get like a bit of a gauge of the type of work that someone might make. Um, it's good to have that web presence because I think as well, like not all of us can afford to travel to go and see X, Y, and Z or to go and do a studio visit with someone. And it, we can do it through Zoom and that sort of thing. But if there's like 
if you have everything on your website, people will be able to see the sort of thing that you do quite quickly. And also, um, I think it's good to, it's good to have like your email address on that website as well. Sometimes I know it's to stop spamming, but sometimes I find those contact boxes really annoying. And uh, you maybe you just want to fire someone a quick email and like, some, you know, sitting down to have to actually type information into a contact boxes can be like a bit frustrating. So I think if you put your email address, it's like an easy way to get in contact. Um, one other thing that they also talk about is like how you might organize. Um, like I was saying earlier on in the session, like how Grand Union came about is because we just did it ourselves. How I practiced before whenever I was in Northern Ireland was just like, I, I did it myself. Um, you know, you, you come out of art school and you can't necessarily expect to just like walk up to Icon Gallery, give them a proposal and you get a solo show. I think also like, um, it's good practice and it's a good way to get to know people if you're putting on your own stuff. And also I think that it's good, not only is it good learning for you, but like, and I say this to the people I work with all the time, like I feel really encouraged when I see other projects that are popping up in, in and around the West Midlands. Um, like Grand Union's 10 years old now. Like I like, I love when someone comes along and they're critical and they're like, you know what, I can do it and I can do it better. And it's like a new generation of people organizing different stuff. Um, like I welcome that, I want it, like you need that. Um, and you need to, if you think you can do like a better job, like just do a better job and like put energy into it. It's also a nice way to like invite different people that you think aren't being shown um into a space that like you cr you create um and there's always ways and means to kind of like organize those things and put on those things um i think we're quite i don't know in my experience i think we're quite good in 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 birmingham at least in like supporting one another um like there's always space where you can like lend space you can give over for someone to like put something on and there's always stuff that we can be doing in kind with one another um and i and like coming back to that white people article um i think that yeah organizing stuff in the way that you want to do it is actually a good way of like bringing um like bringing people you like to to the city one thing that they also talk about is um, like your archive and documentation. I think that um, if you're a practicing artist to document your work is really, really, really important so that you have, um, even if it's just like asking a pal to go and like take some proper decent photos, or if it's like asking someone like Grand Union, could you borrow the gallery for like a day to bring some of your work in and properly document it against like a, whack, a white background um like make sure you have like that proper documentation of your shows or the work that you're making um and because then you can like have it there forever and like people can access your website and can see all of that um another thing they talk about is to back on the socials yes facebook so like i was saying facebook I mean, it feels like it's dying a bit of a death but it is still <laughs> it is still quite useful i guess in um in connecting with different people um you can find loads of other artists or loads of other organizations that are the same with instagram the same with twitter so it's it might be useful to to keep that going um and again it's like a good way to network or connect with people um to like talk more practically about uh what you can do if you want to show your work they go through like a few different options so they talk about open calls um i guess in my experience open calls some are good and some are bad and the white people lay them all out like things they think that are great and things that they think are not i personally feel like no open calls should have any money attached to it whatsoever and i kind of i dissuade artists from paying a fee to submit to something I just don't think that you should have to do that but there are some examples of like open calls uh, where you pay like a small fee 
but maybe there's like an amazing like a uh, group of panelists who are making uh, decisions about who who might be selected through the open call for an exhibition so like to give an example like the john moore's painting prize if you're a painter um i think the entry fee is maybe like 25 quid which is fairly steep um but they always have amazing like painters who are looking through all the submissions. So it might be a good way for you to have your submission actually looked at and your work looked at by all of those different people. Um, there are, oh, there are open calls for, I mean, there are some that are more local and um, some that are more national. And I think, like a good piece of advice is maybe to think about um rather than like wasting all of your time and energy applying for everything really think about what your practice is and what it is that you're doing and if it's like suited for that particular open call you'll see tons of them on twitter at the minute um like loads of digital commissions and there some of them are quite specific to like a theme or responding to a certain idea um don't apply for everything because you'll waste all of your time doing that like really think about the ones that'll be more like suited to the type of work that you make um in terms of sending in proposals to to different galleries there are some that accept them and there are some that that don't that like might not even respond to you i feel like um there's lots of like more artist-led organizations all over the uk and like further fees as well that that do accept proposals or you know if you're traveling around different spaces uh if you're in like a different city like i find that in birmingham i get emails from people all the time and they'll say like oh i'm an artist i'm traveling from leeds can you show me around and can i see the studios and like of course um like don't be afraid to introduce yourself because like we're all human and why not it, it only takes 10 minutes of someone's time to like show you around um and actually i feel like lots of lots of relationships have started with me and different artists just because they sent me an email and said like i'm gonna be in the city um i want to talk about your program and then we've like built up a, a rapport with one another and then we've just like decided that we're going to work with one another um so like don't be afraid to do that um and then it means that you can potentially like send a proposal into that gallery as well um i would probably like start start in smaller spaces as well like like i said before it's unlikely you'll just leave art school and walk into a solo show in the icon gallery but maybe you don't even want to show there because maybe you don't want to show there but um you know there are ways that you can introduce yourself to people and um there's lots of opportunities to kind of do that especially if you're with pals as well like if you if there's a group of you folks traveling to a different place or um maybe some of you are going down on to digbeth on a first friday like just have a chat with different people there it's like a good way to get to know people and for you to make yourself known as well and i know that like networking is kind of like weird and insipid sometimes but um like it's just a conversation um like and don't be afraid of it they also just come back to white pube they also talk about competitions you'll see that there are um like our competitions for artists that are always like circulating online um some of them are decent again like pick and choose the ones that you might want to apply to uh some might be better suited for your practice like if you're um like a watercolor painter maybe it doesn't make sense for you to put in a proposal for like a massive outdoor sculpture somewhere if you've absolutely no experience of doing that or um like it maybe it just that again it would, might be just a waste of your time so you can apply to different competitions but um like make them kind of more suited to the type of work that you make um and what else do they talk about also um in, they talk about like getting to know the different spaces it's like anything isn't it whenever you're involved within like a certain industry it's good to like do a bit of research and know what's going on and what's happening out there there are some spaces that um might be putting on shows 
or that might have a project or a program which is really aligned with the again the type of work that you make um you know there might be a gallery that that run lots of really amazing and integral like community projects and that might be the sort of way in which you pra practice so maybe going to visit them and seeing the sort of work that they make and um, there there are other um spaces like bigger museum spaces that might be more of interest to you there are other like smaller artist-led spaces there are um just to like list a few that uh the white pube talk about and like how to get into the arts there are certain spaces for example that like have a public program that are led by people of color so they they list like the showroom or new art exchange the showrooms in london and they're actually doing really interesting work in and around an area um which has a, a like a really high migrant population and they do loads of like community projects with with the the people in that neighborhood so if that's the sort of work that you want to make or the type of work that you're interested in seeing or being involved with like go and visit those spaces and like make yourself known uh, i mentioned new art exchange in nottingham they always have an amazing program an educational program as well so like their gallery shows are really strong um they're always platforming people of color and uh they have loads of different spaces within the building that loads of different people can use um transmission in glasgow are really interesting uh collective of people that are run by committee so at any given time there's maybe like six to eight people that are working there um and again they have just brought in a new kind of part of their constitution so it's only people of color that are working on that committee and that's like who they're highlighting them and profiling within their exhibition program um so yeah it's good to get a sense of like everything that's going on out there and uh you know there are there are certain projects that are just online projects and maybe if you're like working in a digital way that's the sort of like spaces that you might want to contact or like make yourself known to um i mean there's loads of different options